Welcome to the second video in our series on joint and byproduct costing. In this video, we are going to have a look at the first of our four methods of allocating the joint costs, namely the physical measures method. In this video, we will begin by revising the basic idea behind joint and byproduct costing. We will then understand the key ideas behind the physical measures method. Once we have understood these key ideas, we will then look at a practical example in which we allocate the joint costs to the joint products. From this example, we will see the advantages and disadvantages of the physical measures method and conclude by discussing under what circumstances this method is suitable. Let us begin by revising the idea behind joint and byproducts. As with any other manufacturing process, we take our raw materials, labor, and overheads and we subject them to the manufacturing process in order to get a product out at the end. However, unlike a single product process, we could get out two or three or even more products simultaneously from the process. Remember, a key is that the products are produced simultaneously in a joint process. It is important to note that for joint processes, we cannot distinguish between the different products until a specific point known as the split-off point. Before the split-off point, we cannot trace the costs to the individual products. Finally, after the split-off points, where the products are separately identifiable, the products may be subject to further processing. These further processing costs can be traced to the individual products to which they relate. Now, one of the key issues we need to deal with in a joint and byproduct costing scenario is the allocation of the joint costs to the joint products. We have four different methods that we'll be looking at in the series, and in this video, we'll be dealing with the physical measures method. So what is the physical measures method all about? The key idea behind this method is that the joint costs are allocated to the joint products based on the output quantity only. The assumption underlying this method is that because all the products are coming through the same process, they should all be receiving the same benefits. Let us work through a small example to see how the physical measures method works. We have a company called Joint that produces three products in a joint process. The total joint costs amount to 400,000 Rand. Note that we have already deducted the net realizable value of any byproducts in arriving at this 400,000 Rand. Always remember to adjust the joint costs for any byproduct, scrap, and waste before allocating the joint cost to the joint product. We are then given details of the three products at the split off point when they become separately identifiable. We are given the output in units the sales value per unit at the split off point, any further processing costs, and then a final sales value after further processing has taken place. Now remember, the key idea behind the physical measures method is that we allocate the joint costs based on the output only. Therefore, in this information, we are only concerned about the output. We can ignore the rest of the details. So if we have a look at this table, what information do we already have? We already know the unit produced for each joint product, as well as the total joint costs to be allocated. These were given to us in the question, so we can fold them in. What we now need to do is calculate the joint costs allocated to each product. To do so, we begin by calculating the proportion of total output that each product represents. So product A represents 15,000 units out of our total production of 40,000 units. 15,000 divided by 40,000 represents 37.5%. Likewise, product B represents 20,000 units out of the total of 40,000 units. 20,000 divided by 40,000 represents 50% of total production. Finally, product C represents 5,000 units out of the total of 40,000 units. 
5,000 divided by 40,000 represents 12.5%. These proportions then add up to 100%. We now have the proportion of each product's output to the total output of the joint process. To calculate the joint costs allocated to each product, we simply take the total joint costs of 400,000 Rand and multiply it by each product's proportion of output. So for product A, we take the 400,000 Rand and multiply it by the proportion of 37.5% to get an allocation of 150,000 Rand. For product B, we take the 400,000 Rand and multiply it by the proportion of 50% to get an allocation of 200,000 Rand. Finally, for product C, we take the 400,000 Rand and multiply it by the proportion of 12.5% to get 50,000 Rand. We now have our joint cost allocation for each product. To calculate the joint cost per unit, we take the allocated joint cost and divide it by the number of units produced. So for product A, we will take the 150,000 Rand we just calculated and divide it by the 15,000 units produced to get 10 Rand per unit. We do the same for product B and product C, and you will notice that each product's joint cost per unit is 10 Rand. This is in line with the underlying assumption that we discussed earlier, that each product receives similar benefits from the joint process. If each product is receiving the same benefits, we would expect that the joint cost allocated per unit to be the same. There's one more thing that we need to look at with regards to the physical measures method. And that is what does our final profit per product look like at the end. So remember, our profit per product will be the final sales value less the further processing costs and less the joint costs allocated. Let us do this together. To get our total sales revenue, we simply take the final selling price and multiply it by the unit produced. We can then deduct the joint costs allocated, which we just calculated, as well as the further processing costs, which were given to us in the scenario. We then arrive at the profit or loss for each product. What we notice here is that the process overall is profitable. Despite this, however, product B is only breaking even and generating a net profit of zero. Of further concern, if we look at the original information in the scenario, is that the joint cost per unit for product B of 10 Rand exceeds the sales value at the split off point of 8 Rand. This means that if we do not further process, we will need to write down the inventory value of product B from its cost of 10 Rand to its net realizable value of 8 Rand. This is one of the major problems with the physical measures method. Given what we have seen in the example, let us consider the suitability of the physical measures method. If we look at the advantages of the physical measures method, we see that it is very simple to use and understand. However, looking at the disadvantages, we have two major concerns. First, our output must be measured with the same units. This is because we are adding the output together. So if one output from the process is a solid, measured in kilograms, while another output is a liquid, measured in liters, we have a problem as we cannot add kilograms and liters. The second problem, as we saw when calculating the individual product's profits, is that because there is no relationship between the sales revenue and the allocated cost, it is possible that the allocated cost could exceed the sales revenue, resulting in the need for a write-down. So given these issues, we need to ask when is the physical measures method suitable? It is suitable when the outputs from the process are measured in the same way. For example, everything should be measured in kilograms. We also need the outputs to have similar selling prices. That brings us to the end of the physical measures method. Join us in our next video where we look at the sales value at split-off method.